Good Tuesday evening, everybody, live and direct on Periscope and Twitter. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It is a quiet Tuesday evening. We don't have much going on immediately, but as we go into the course of the next couple of days, we may see some changes taking place, not to mention the fact that we may be looking at the possibility of some much colder weather heading our way as we get into the course of the next several days toward about the beginning to middle part of next week. New burst of cold air has the potential for heading our direction, and that, again, could be causing a lot of problems for outdoor activities as we go toward the beginning portion of next week and into the later portion of next week as well. Uh, visit to you, Space space Seeds. Welcome to the, sh to the show, News Lady. Thank you very much uh, for stopping on by on Periscope. Glad to have everybody along for tonight on Periscope and Twitter. We're looking again at some quiet conditions here. Give me a couple of seconds to invite everybody on Facebook in to make certain we've got everybody uh, watching the show for this evening. And if you are joining us, definitely want to make certain that you include your location and, of course, your weather reports. If you've got them in the comments section, would love to have you along and find out more about where you're from and what the weather conditions are like wherever you may happen to be. And that's in the Mid-South. That's great. If you're outside of the Mid-South, that's even better. We've had people from around the world, Scotland, United Arab Emirates last week. So great to have everybody along for that and sticking around for this evening. Again, we're looking at some fairly quiet conditions for right now. Thanks to everybody for joining us again on Periscope Twitter and welcoming in everybody on Facebook right now. So decently quiet in much of the Mid-South for right now. Let's go ahead and get started so you don't have to hear me blather about everything. Starting to take a look at what's going on with earthquakes. We're very close to the New Madrid fault here, so we like to keep an eye on what's going on. Yes, technically, if you want to get nitpicky, it's not about weather, but it's still something that is very important to this area, considering what kind of seismic activity we've had in this area for the area. Area. T underscore fan. Thanks for joining us on Periscope for tonight and everybody else who's checking in on Facebook for right now. More information about earthquakes in the Mid-South and beyond, United States Geological Survey at earthquakes.usgs.gov or really great website, the Center for Earthquake Research and Information from the University of Memphis, and that's at memphis.edu slash CERI if you'd like to get more information about what's going on seismically in the Mid-South. CBU... Net 13, if I'm C. Burnett 13. Sorry about that. These bifocals aren't working too well on Periscope. Thanks for joining us there. Uh, for tomorrow, again, temperatures in the Mid-South back into the mid to upper 60s as we head out of the forecast into tomorrow afternoon. So the car rider line doesn't look too bad. You'll need the jacket in the morning waiting for the school bus, but by the time you're getting picked up from school, the kids, you're not going to need those jackets out there. Likewise, the good news at this time, we're not seeing anything in the way of rainfall purposes for much of Wednesday and much of the Mid-South, but we could see again the possibility of maybe some scattered showers into and around the area as we get closer toward around the afternoon, and that's mainly for eastern Arkansas. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Quiet night in the Mid-South. This is from our Cotton Exchange camera overlooking downtown Memphis and a view from around the Mid-South. Again, showing good view of planes coming in for a landing at Memphis International Airport. Tuning around to see Union Avenue and around the Peabody Hotel roof just past baseball season. AutoZone Park on the lower left-hand side of your screen and the Duckies well asleep in their palace for tonight on top of the Peabody roof. Looking at Big River Crossing, lit up quite nicely into and around the area of downtown Memphis and the area close to West Memphis, Arkansas. Traffic on I-55 in good view tonight. A little bit on the heavy side earlier this evening, so we're not getting too much right now. Traffic appears to be moving along pretty well and all the way out into around Missouri Street in and around West Memphis, Arkansas for tonight. Back into the area around 240 and Poplar from the Hilton East Memphis camera. Traffic decently heavy for a Tuesday evening, but the good news is everything's moving along pretty well. That accident over by Perkins and Get Well, it looks like it's been cleared up for right now, so not much of any backups to report and good visibility all the way back out to around Memphis International Airport. Currently on Storm Tracker 3S, we have little, if anything, showing up in the way of problems for the Mid South. It's very dry air in place, so we're not going to be seeing much in the way of rainfall yet. But as we get into tomorrow, that's going to be a little bit more of a concern going on. The storm system we're watching is partly over portions of the Mid Plain states. 
from Wichita down to Oklahoma City. We've got some scattered light showers, and this is part of a front that is moving our direction. You can see that front right now, right about Fayetteville, back up to about Columbia, Jefferson City, and all the way back up to just west of Chicago. So that front is going to continue to move our direction. But here's the big thing about this. This is coming from and moving into relatively dry air. There's no moisture off the Atlantic for this. There's hardly anything coming in from off the Pacific. So this is a very moisture-starved system. So unfortunately, this does not look like it's going to give us much of any hope for anything involving huge amounts of rainfall. Now, we need the rainfall at this point because a lot of the Mid-South area has been seeing some fairly dry conditions out there causing problems with wildfires especially in and around Arkansas, where there's a moderate to high risk of wildfires out there. And some of that is a problem in the Mid-South. Humidities have been down to about 20% in the Mid-South today, and that just rips the moisture right out of those plants, causes them to dry up. And that's where we see a little bit more of a problem where it comes to wildfires where we are. Now, looking back out to the West Coast states, if you're heading this direction, anywhere between, say, uh, LAX and SeaTac, you could see some delays here. River of moisture coming on through. This is going from the tropics right off around portions of Hawaii and delivering a lot of areas of much needed moisture into around portions of Mexico and down into around the desert southwest. So hopefully this brings more rainfall out that direction and helps a lot of the wildfire danger out there. We do have another storm system sitting off the Gulf of Alaska and this thing is decently active. It's been causing a lot of waves of energy to be moving on shore and this is where we may see again more problems with us dragging down a lot of cold air as we get into the next couple of days. But this is still relatively far off, several thousand miles, so not causing us much of a problem for now. But as we get into around the rest of this next weekend and next week, things may change by just a little bit. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Pardon the bifocals. Billy Franklin, welcome to the show on Facebook. Thanks for dropping on by and everybody who's checking in on Periscope and Twitter for tonight. Again, this is the main thing for right now. Some rain and snow showers up around the Cascades. Parts of the northern Rockies getting some problems there, but for us it's going to be this next storm system sitting here over the Plain States that we see the potential for some more problems coming our way as that gets a little bit closer to us in the next couple of days. Temperatures across the Mid-South ranging from the lower 50s around Cross County High School, Cherry Valley, Arkansas, to the mid to upper 30s. So we could see some frost in parts of the Mid-South as we get into very early tomorrow morning. So that could be a bit of a problem there. Let's run the numbers and show you what's going on. Overnight, not expecting a problem. Todd Demers on the air tomorrow at 430. Still not seeing much in the way of moisture until we get into around tomorrow afternoon and that into eastern Arkansas. And remember that very light moisture out west that we showed you on uh, Storm Tracker 3S radar. That's going to be moving into the area, but it's moving into very dry air. So it's probably going to be ripped apart pretty well. Very mild tomorrow, back in the mid to upper 60s out there. So that will be very comfortable. And then into tomorrow night, we'll be seeing more moisture kind of override that dry air just by a little bit. So we'll be looking for more showers taking place as we get into Thursday morning, which means for your commute time, you may want to save some extra time. Not necessarily tomorrow. Always great to save time on your commute. But for Thursday, if there's anything involving rainfall out there, this is where you want to, again, save yourself some time and headaches and a little bit of extra time and a lot less off the accelerator would be a very good idea. Now, into Thursday, this is where a fresh burst of cooler air arrives. Not what we're looking for for next week. You can see the winds coming in out of the north, winds out of the south ahead of that front. That'll be passing through the mid-south as we go about daybreak into around rush hour on Thursday. After that, the dry air takes over, sweeps all the rainfall out of here, and that's going to be it for the chances of rainfall for a while. Now, next week, past the weekend into next week, the first full week of December, this is where we're going to be seeing some interesting effects from the perturbations in the atmosphere to where we see again things start to change. Notice temperatures here are pretty mild with the green and yellow colors, but we look back toward the north and to the west. Large chunk of cold Canadian air. In some cases, this looks like it's going to be coming from basically right down off of the poles. This is going to be a chunk of the polar vortex getting a little closer from just right off of Hudson Bay, the Northwest Territories, and diving right into the northern United States. And the leading edge of that will be going our way by about Tuesday in the very early morning hours 
going across. That's next Tuesday, not tonight. And then as we get into next Wednesday, the leading edge of that cold air starts to sweep from the Plain States over and across much of the Mid-South and keeps us very chilly right on into next Thursday and Friday. So maybe we're going to be a little mild at first, but we may see again the potential for some problems taking place as we get into late next week in the form of a lot colder weather. Now, Keep in mind, this is just one computer model here, the European model, and that, again, usually pretty accurate with stuff like this, but it is still very far out. So, again, this could definitely change a lot in the next few days. For tomorrow, temperature's not bad, back in the mid to upper 60s, slight chance of a shower out there. As we get into Thursday, there will be more chances of showers across the Mid-South. Not huge amounts, but again, there will be the possibility of sprinkles out there and still pretty well on the mild side. Now, getting into Friday, we get a little cooler, thanks to that cool burst of air coming on through. Mostly clear, sunny, beautiful day coming up, going right into the weekend, pleasant and dry. No problems for outside athletic events, that garage sale you've been meaning to hold. That looks pretty good as well, so outdoor activities look good. A little cool at night back in the lower 40s. Starting off next work and or school week, heading into the first full week of December, we see temperatures start off pretty mild back in the lower to mid 60s with chances of rainfall here. Now, again, this will change. Again, anything that goes about this far out, this is almost more of a suggestion than anything else. It's not going to be carved in stone, that's for certain. A lot more accurate back here than what we're going to see over here. So stay tuned to News Channel 3 for updates on that. As we head toward next Thursday, that's where we see temperatures a little bit on the cooler side here, mid to upper 40s as we go toward Thursday. And then by Friday, and I've kind of tread the middle ground here, some of the models saying lower 50s once again, some of them saying upper 30s. So this is walking that middle territory by saying mid 40s, going to ride the middle territory for right now on that guess for the possibility of colder weather coming on through. Not convinced of this. Yes, I called it a guess because as of right now, there's going to be a lot of changes between here and there that could take this temperature temperature one direction or the other. There's also some computer models that are showing the potential of some snow mixed in with some of this rainfall. But once again, those computer models are this far out, nothing really more than just little basic whispers of suggestions. There's really not that much more than that, unfortunately, for right now. So not seeing much of anything in the way of great amounts of snowfall out there. Cooler weather, a good possibility. So looking forward to some things cooling off if that's what happens. But once again, going into this weekend, we'll know a lot more about what may be coming our way. So keep it tuned and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on out there as we go into the course of the next few days. Now, as I told you earlier, Again, we'd love to see your pictures out there, filling in some of mine tonight because we didn't have quite as many. So if you have anything that you'd like to show us, whether pictures around the Mid-South or throughout any part, other part of the country, please tweet them to me. We'd love to be able to see them and show them on our netcast and then also on our newscast as well. One of mine from Windy Country Club at sunset for tonight and a couple of our other pictures out there from Smith JD 1903 Great view. Not too sure where this is from, but thank you very much for a beautiful, I believe, a sunset shot from earlier tonight, I think. I'm not sure. Didn't have the date stamp on that one. And a great view from, of course, Louis Haskett from northeast Arkansas out in the fields, getting a gorgeous view of some sunrise from this morning and very frequent contributor. Thank you very much, Mr. Haskett, for some great pictures out there that you send in from Northeast Arkansas as you get those fields taken care of out there. Thank you very much. If you've got pictures, great. Show them to us and let us put them on our netcasts, Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter, Aonic no underscore necessary on Instagram, and Austinonic WREG on Facebook. We'd love to have you along for the ride. So if you've got pictures, we can't show them. If you don't send them, you kind of see the problem there. So if you've got them, please send them into us. We'd love to feature them when we have time on News Channel 3. Tomorrow morning, if the clouds are not too much of a problem, but they could be, and this is, again, just a heads up if you're going to be up this early, just up and to the left of the North Star, an Iridium satellite will briefly turn around and reflect some sunlight off the rising sun, and we'll catch a little bit of that. We'll start to see this get a little brighter as it goes down toward the northern horizon. It'll max out. It'll become very bright, just like another star, and then it'll fade away. You have to be watching for this very carefully. This is something you're going to have to watch, again, to the north-northwest 
Unfortunately, the clouds could interfere. This is all part of the Iridium communication satellite network that went defunct back in about late 90s, early 2000s. And the satellites are still up there, and those solar panels reflect light when they tumble around and are able to project a beam of sunlight back down toward our planet. So we are able to see some of that out there. And that's as an iridium flare tomorrow. should be very bright, but unfortunately clouds could be a problem into early tomorrow morning. So again, into tomorrow morning, not this morning as in Tuesday morning, but Wednesday morning. I built this graphic for tomorrow. So this is what you should look for about 6.03, just to the north and up or left of the North Star to be able to see this tomorrow. Catch my forecast with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. I talk about mainly sports, but they also got news and community events and all kinds of other great stuff. If you can't listen on the radio because you're outside of the radio range, listen on TalkbackLiveNetwork.org. And of course, Todd Demers will have more on your complete weather experts forecast coming up tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak Wednesday. That'll do it for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. I'll be in for Jim Jaggers for your complete forecast tonight on News Channel 3 at 10 and join us for a complete update on all the day's news, weather, and sports in the Mid-South and beyond. And again, that'll be coming up just within the top of the hour at about 10 o'clock. Thanks for joining us on News Channel 3 for our exclusive video weather blog, weather overtime, and keep it tuned to News Channel 3 on air and online.